Hello Saxo fans, welcome back to episode 64 and the Saxo in the garage. Now, in today's episode, we are going to try and resolve, or at least reduce, one problem that this car has, and that is torque steer. Don't you know what torque steer is? Stick around and find out and I'll tell you all about it. What we're going to change today is probably part of several changes that I think I'm going to make to the car that are probably going to hopefully contribute towards a solution to reduce, not remove, torque steer. And I say reduce because at the end of the day, we're running 300 pound feet of torque through the front wheels of a, a light and small car. So I think we're always going to torque steer to some degree. It's just hopefully trying to get it under control. Um, and if, if we can do that and make it a more pleasurable experience to drive, because at the moment it's bordering on undrivable. So with that in mind, I saw the other day, maybe three or four weeks ago, that Satchel Engineering have come up with a drive shaft kit to give you equal length drive shafts, specifically for people that have got BE gearboxes just like me. I reached out to Colin and Tony, asked for a mega mega deal, and they hooked me up. So let's unbox it and see what we've got. Right, let's see what we've got. Still sealed in box while I unpack this let's just talk a little bit about torque steer there's lots and lots of causes of torque steer and I'm not going to talk through all of them but one of them is having unequal length drive shafts like Saxo's do and other causes are things like having excessive power or torque through the front wheels I wonder what could have caused that then. Also, things like the road surface can have an effect if you're pushing things like worn bushes, all that sort of stuff can cause torque steer. Now torque steer obviously, well it might not be obvious, is where when you accelerate the wheel is essentially pulled from one side to uh, essentially pulling it out of your hands away from the direction that you want to go in. And it's not pretty especially when it's violent like it is in mine. Anyway let's pull this out. Brand new drive shaft. Some lovely billet goodness. The drive shaft retaining bolts. And the bearing carrier. That's it, that's the kit. Now it's worth saying there's two options when you order this you can get it with an engine mount kit as well um, i didn't do that because i'm already pretty well pretty well set up on my engine mounts and i didn't really want to change them at this point in time obviously it does cost a little bit more but if you wanted this with different driver uh, different engine mounts um obviously nice nice billet items i think they are um then obviously you can order those as well but these are lovely beautifully anodized nice color Right, onto the car then. So if you remember back to the last episode, I showed you that I had split my CV boot and it has spat grease out everywhere. So obviously I've got a clean cleaning up job to do. But the added bonus of this kit is that it moves the CV joint further inwards and that's how it achieves the equal length drive shafts because it moves the bearing carrier, which is just behind that CV boot there. It moves that further inwards and lengthens this shaft to be the same as the passenger side. That's my understanding of it. So I will also now no longer have a clearance issue. So this is obviously one of the reasons why I really wanted this kit because I knew I had an issue here as well. So an added bonus, it also gives you better CV angles 
And I guess if you're doing things like rallying, then these, these, this kit gives you more droop travel if that's what you're after. Right, before I have to get messy taking all this stuff out, it's probably just worth noting, I will put a link in the, in the description for the Satchel website directly to this page. Um, if you've got a Saxo or a 106 with a TU engine and a BE4 gearbox, uh, get yourself one of these kits. The quality is brilliant, honestly, second to none. All of the Satchel stuff I've ever had has been such nice stuff, really, really good. Delivery times have been great for me. Um, yeah, you won't be disappointed. Get yourself one of these kits. There we go then, drive shaft removed. So, old one, new one. You really can see the difference here. So this whole section here has been moved that way. So essentially this shaft is shorter. This shaft here is what's equal length now to the passenger side, hopefully. And of course this boot won't now hit the chassis. And I've just turned this to the right place and pulled it a little bit. You can see we've got a nice big hole in that. So that boot needs replacing. Obviously these boots are cheap as chips, so the shaft is still absolutely fine. It's just the boot that's split. So what I need to do now is take the carrier off for this, have a bit of a clean up, and then bolt up the new one. It's all still loose at the moment. And then, uh, yeah, get that bolted on. shaft slotted straight in jobs are getting nice and easy and you can just see how much further away the cv boot is there from that you know i've actually got air gap clearance now and obviously through all orientations so yeah really pleased with that it's really good bolted on straight away i did need a slightly shorter bolt from what i was running in this the casting is obviously slightly thicker so, but yeah, obviously I had some, so no dramas. Right, so the only thing really left to do now is bolt the suspension back on, put the exhaust back on. The only reason why I took the exhaust off is because it's right by where the oil would drain out. And I didn't want that get to get to get covered in trans fluid. So yeah, it's only V-band, so it's super easy. And as if by magic, 
all back together. Jobs are good. And last thing to do is put the gearbox fluid in. I actually do this through the breather just down there, just taking the cap off of that. I'm actually going to use the old gearbox fluid because it's probably done about 200 miles, so it's absolutely fine. Just bang it straight back in. I think I lost about a litre through taking out the drive shaft. So yeah, should be good. Let's get the gearbox fluid in.
down this part, this little bit of road here the other day and I genuinely nearly put, nearly put it on the grass verge. So to be able to actually go in a straight line is brilliant. So we'll get it home. I'll just quickly jack it up one more time and make sure things are all good. Make sure there's no leaks. Obviously I didn't change the dry shaft seal because it is fine. It's still fairly new. So Got to get in. See you in a minute. There we go, then, folks. Test drive done. Drive shaft fitted. Torque steer now on a scale of one to ten. Previously, it was an eleven. Now I'd say it's maybe a five or a six. So that has properly dialed it down. If you need that kit, get over to Satchel. It's worth saying. I'm not sponsored by Satchel. They just make some really good stuff. And they've looked after me in the past so yeah thank you guys again for doing that if you need this kit and you're suffering with a bit of torque steer or genuinely that that is yes it's a massive improvement i can't believe how much it's changed the car next thing is probably to do the track what ends as i mentioned out in the car hopefully you can hear me uh, talking maybe you don't want to hear me whatever uh, yeah, I'll change the track what ends, put a bit of toe out in is what I've been told, Steve, you know you are. Uh, I'll try a bit of toe out and see if that maybe takes it down from like a five or a six out of ten to like a three or a four. And that's a positive step forward. If that works, then maybe I might think about not doing coilovers. I don't know. The only problem with coilovers are so expensive. If anybody wants to sponsor me for some coilovers, hit me up. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed this quick episode and uh, yeah, we'll see you again for the next one. See you soon.